Hello everyone and a huge welcome to this hands-on project. We all know Python is fantastic for getting ideas up and running quickly, but when it comes to raw computational speed, C++ is the undisputed champion. What if we could get the best of both worlds? What if we could write our logic in simple Python and then have a personal AI expert instantly rewrite it into blazingly fast, high-performance C++. You have access to the code on our GitHub page, and you can find the link in the description of this video. Well, today, that's exactly what we're going to build. We are going to create a complete Python to C++ code converter from scratch. This isn't just a simple script, it's a full stack application that uses powerful large language models like GPT-40 and Claude 3.5 Sonnet as its reasoning engine. We'll build the backend logic, the AI communication pipeline, and a beautiful web interface with Gradio where you can see the magic happen in real time. This is a deep dive tutorial where we'll explain every line of code and the reasoning behind it. By the end, you'll have a powerful tool and a deep understanding of how to integrate modern AI into your own applications. So, let's get started. Before we write a single line of code, let's zoom out and look at our project's blueprint. A good application has a clear structure, and ours can be thought of as a factory assembly line, with each file playing a specific role. It all begins at the front door our Gradio user interface, UI.py. This is where the user will interact with our application, pasting in their Python code and clicking buttons. When the user clicks convert, the request is sent to our conversion logic, conversion.py. Think of this as our master translator and project manager. Its job is to take the Python code, wrap it in a carefully constructed set of instructions, and manage communication with our AI models. Next, the conversion logic sends the request over the internet to the LLM API. This is where the heavy lifting happens. A massive model like GPT-40 or Claude analyzes the request and generates the high-performance C++ code. The generated code is then sent back to our application. At this point, our execution engine, execution.pi, can be used. This part of our factory is the quality control and testing department. It can compile and run the new C++ code and the original Python code, so we can verify that the logic is correct. Finally, the results, both the newly generated C++ code and the output from execution, are sent back to the Gradio UI to be displayed neatly for the user. Understanding this flow will make it much easier to see how each piece of code we write fits into the bigger picture. All right, let's start with the foundation of any good project, the configuration file, config.pi. Think of this as the central control panel for our entire application. Instead of hard coding important values throughout our scripts, we define them all in one clean, organized place. First, we use a library called python.nv, this allows us to store our secret API keys in a special file named .env. This is a critical security practice because it ensures we never accidentally commit our sensitive credentials to a public GitHub repository. The load.env function reads this file and makes the keys available as environment variables. Next, we create what are called API clients. An API client is an object that handles all the complex details of communicating with a service. Think of it like having a dedicated pre-programmed phone line directly to OpenAI and another one to Anthropic. We instantiate them here so they're ready to use anywhere in our project. We also define our model names as constants. This is great because if a new, better model like GPT-5 comes out, we only have to change the name in this one spot. Finally, we define our system message. This is our prime directive for the AI. It sets the context and personality for every single conversation we have with it. We're telling it from the start. 
You are an expert C++ developer. Your goal is performance. Your output should be code. This is the foundation of our prompt engineering. Now we move to the heart of our application, conversion.pi, and specifically to the most creative part of working with LLMs, prompt engineering. The AI models we're using are incredibly powerful, but they aren't mind readers. The quality of the C++ code we get back is almost entirely dependent on how clearly and effectively we ask for it. Let's break down how we construct our request. The user prompt for function builds the specific task for this one conversion. We don't just give it the Python code. We surround it with very clear instructions. We explicitly say fastest possible implementation and produces identical output. We even give it helpful hints that a good programmer would know, like pay attention to number types to ensure no int overflows and remember to include all necessary C++ packages. This level of detail dramatically improves the quality of the generated code. Then, the messages for function assembles the final payload. Modern chat-based models work best with a structured conversation history. Here, we create a list of messages. The first message is our system role. Using the system message from our config file, this sets the AI's long-term personality. The second message is the user role, which contains the specific one-time request we just built. This system user structure is the standard and most effective way to guide the model's behavior. With our perfect prompt constructed, it's time to actually send it to the AI. That's the job of our stream GPT and stream Claude functions. Now we could just send the request and wait for the full C++ code to come back but that might take five or 10 seconds. And during that time, our user interface would just be frozen, leaving the user wondering if it's even working. A much better user experience is to stream the response. This means the model sends us the code token by token as it generates it. Let's look at stream GPT. We make our API call, but we add the crucial argument stream equals true. This changes the return value from a single object to a generator. We can then loop through this generator, and in each iteration, we get a small chunk of the response. We append this chunk to our reply and then yield the current state of the reply. In our UI, this will make the C++ code appear to be typed out in real time. Now, Stream Claude is similar, but adds another layer of professionalism, error handling with exponential back off. Sometimes a popular API can be temporarily overloaded. This code is wrapped in a try.accept block. If it catches an API error that indicates the service is overloaded, it doesn't just crash. It waits for a couple of seconds and then tries again. If it fails again, it doubles the waiting time before the next attempt. This is a robust way to handle temporary network issues and makes our application much more reliable. So we have functions to build our prompt and functions to talk to the APIs. Now we need something to connect them all together. That's the optimize function. It's the orchestrator or the project manager for our backend. This is the single function that our user interface will call. It's very straightforward. It takes the user's Python code and the model they selected from the drop-down menu in the UI. It then uses a simple if elif block to act as a switchboard. Choosing the correct streaming function, stream GPT or stream Claude, to call based on the user's choice. It then needs to consume the entire stream. The for loop iterates through every partial result yielded by our streaming function. While the UI will be updating in real time with these partial results, this loop's purpose is to wait until the stream is completely finished and capture the final output. Once the loop is done, we have the complete C++ code. We pass this to our simple write output helper function. This function just does a little bit of text cleaning to remove any markdown formatting the AI might have added and then saves the final clean code to a file named optimized.cpp. Finally, it returns the complete code, which Gradio will then display in the output text box in our UI.
Generating the C++ code is cool, but how do we know it actually works? And is it really faster? That's where our execution.pi script comes in. This is our execution engine and testing ground. First, let's look at execute Python. To run Python code that's currently just a string, we can use the built-in exec function. It's very powerful, but be aware. It can be a security risk if you're running untrusted code. To capture the output of any print statements within that code, we do a clever trick. We temporarily hijack Python standard output and redirect it to an in-memory text buffer using io.stringio. We run the code, capture everything printed to the buffer, and then restore the standard output. Now for execute CPP. This is a two-step process that mimics what a developer would do on the command line. First, we use Python's subprocess module to call the Clang++ compiler. Look at the flags we are using. Minus std equals C++17 ensures we're using a modern C++ standard. OFAST is an aggressive optimization flag telling the compiler prioritize speed above all else and March native tells it to generate code that is specifically optimized for the exact CPU architecture of the machine it's running on. This is where we get our high performance. If the code compiles successfully, we then use subprocess a second time to run the newly created executable and capture its output. If any errors happen during compilation or runtime, our try Except block will catch them and return the error message to the user. Now let's build the front door to our application, the user interface in UI.py. Normally, to build a web interface like this, you'd need to be a web developer and know HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. But the Gradio library is like a superpower for Python developers, letting us build and share interactive UIs with just a few lines of Python. We define our entire layout inside A with GR blocks as UI block. This gives us full control. We use GR tabs to create a clean organized interface with a conversion tab and an execution tab. Inside these, we lay out our components using GR row and widgets like GR text box for multi-line code input, GR dropdown for our model selection, and GR button for our actions. We can even pass in custom CSS to style it and give it a polished professional look. Now for the most magical part, the dot click methods at the bottom. This is how we wire up our front end buttons to our back end Python functions. This one line convert button dot click optimize comma space says everything. When the convert button is clicked, call the optimize function. Take the values from the Python input text box and the model drop down as its inputs, and whatever that function returns, display it in the CPP output text box. It's an incredibly simple and powerful way to connect a user interface to our code. Last but not least, we have our launcher script, main.pi. Every great application needs a single clear starting point, a main entrance, and that's exactly what this file is. Its job is incredibly simple, but essential. It imports just one thing, the launch judge UI function we just defined in our UI.pi file. Then, inside the standard if name equals main block, which ensures this code only runs when we execute this script directly, we do two things. First, we call launch UI, which runs all our Gradio code and constructs the entire UI object in memory. Second, we call the launch method on that UI object. This is the final command that actually starts the local web server, builds the HTML and JavaScript for the web page. And with in browser equals true, automatically opens a new tab in your default browser pointing to our running application. To start this entire complex full stack AI application, all a user needs to do is run one simple command in their terminal, python main.py. So let's step back and look at what you have just built. This is so much more than just a simple script. You have orchestrated a complete system of modern AI tools to create a genuinely useful and powerful application. 
you've learned how to securely manage API keys and interact with state-of-the-art language models like GPT-40 and Claude 3.5. You've practiced the crucial art of prompt engineering to guide and control the behavior of these AIs. You've built a robust execution engine that can compile and run native code from Python. And you've wrapped it all in a beautiful full-stack web application using Gradio. The skills you've learned here are the foundation for building the next generation of AI-powered software. I encourage you to take this project and make it your own. Try adding more target languages like Rust or Go. You could even build in an automatic performance benchmark that runs both versions and shows the user exactly how much faster the C++ code is. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey. If you found this tutorial valuable and you feel like you've learned a lot, please give the video a like and subscribe for more deep dives into building real-world AI applications. Happy coding!